another Lunch and Learn by Cat Dimensions. I'm Kevin Holbrook, and we're going to talk today about managing standard content in SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. Uh, this is one of the top topics I threw on the calendar several months ago. Um, just kind of felt that uh, those of you who have implemented Enterprise PDM still haven't went what I'll call all in with all the content that you can share amongst your users uh, inside of SOLIDWORKS. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. A few housekeeping issues. If you have any questions during today's session, uh, please post them in the question section of the GoToWebinar window. Uh, I will absolutely take some time at the end today and answer any of those questions. Um, today we're going to be talking about the standard content. A lot of what I'm presenting is uh, you know, conversational, I guess you can say, and uh, I'm getting used to talking to myself on these lunch and learns, so um, you might hear some uh, other personalities come out today, but um, I'm very passionate about the whole idea of, of data management and, uh, you know, really committing to managing all of the things that you share on a daily basis in the SOLIDWORKS world inside of Enterprise PDM. So our agenda today, <clears throat> it's really coming down to, to these items, and I see I got toolbox on here twice, but um, we're going to talk about templates and sheet formats, uh, how we can manage those, how we can get them to the right user at the right time. I want to talk about toolbox and the toolbox add-in that's been written for Enterprise PDM. How do we work with the design library? and something I call SOLIDWORKS custom files. Uh, custom files are uh, the library of documents that you point to under file locations in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, and then I want to talk about routing as well. And then how we might handle just a custom shared library. Uh, you know, just uh, where you have content of repeatable items that uh, are going to be used from project to project, how you might organize that. So let's go ahead and, uh, and get going here. <clears throat> so the first thing we have to get out of the way is the term templates, because for those of you who have implemented the Enterprise PDM, uh, there's a function inside of Enterprise PDM called templates as well. What I'm really focusing on today is is the templates that you use to create SOLIDWORKS documents. Your part assembly and drawing templates as well as your sheet formats. Now the first thing we consider uh, inside of Enterprise is we have to make sure we can support those file formats. Okay, we, I've listed the extensions there. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to do that. Whenever we're talking about standardization, one of the first questions you have to ask yourself, because that affects the implementation, is do the users always need the latest version? Well, for templates, uh, excuse me, templates and sheet formats, we, I believe they do. So if you make a change to a logo or something in the title block, you immediately want the users to have the latest version. We'll talk about how that happens. Uh, also, there's two ways to administer uh, templates. Uh, one is actually using a enterprise template, which I'll show you. Um, this is also one of the areas where we can adjust our duplicate file settings um, to accommodate for the fact that we really don't need to have duplicate part templates, duplicate drawing templates. So we may want to adjust those. We want to make sure the workflow will accept any of these file extensions. We want to make sure if we want to uh, capture any metadata that there's data card support. And then we need to talk about permissions. You know, what permissions at the very least uh, do someone have to uh, handle? Well, first off, let's, <clears throat> let's take a look at the two different ways we can administer the templates inside of SOLIDWORKS. So first thing first, uh, I'll go ahead and launch my SOLIDWORKS. If I get into my vault, what I've done for today's webinar is I've organized all the things that I considered standardized content 
in a folder at the root of my vault called libraries. In that folder, um, I've put my design library, my standard SOLIDWORKS library, my templates and toolbox. You'll notice that my templates, uh, when I get in here, I actually have two sections to templates. One is the section where I would access those templates from inside of SOLIDWORKS. And the other templates that you're seeing, which will actually be assemblies, parts, and drawings, are used by enterprise PDM templates. So let me talk to you about the difference for a moment here. So enterprise PDM templates, you can tell that they're enterprise templates when you go into your file new inside of SOLIDWORKS, you'll have a tab titled SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM, and you'll see the templates listed there. Now these templates, and again, this is very confusing because Enterprise uses the term templates, they're set up to automate the creation of a SOLIDWORKS document. Very much like accessing a template uh, slightly differently. If I open this up, it, it automates it and it forces me to save the file into the vault. It also automatically brings up the data card. So there's kind of some automation built into enterprise PDM templates. Now they're set up completely differently and I've done a lunch and learn on this. I'll just take you in there very quickly. Inside the admin tool, there's a complete section for enterprise PDM templates. Uh, I have three of them, one to create an assembly, one to create a drawing, one to create a part. But I want to focus more specifically on what we traditionally know in SOLIDWORKS as a template. We go to File New and we have you know, the tabs that list our, our part template in millimeter, our part in inch. So the first thing you're going to do, and I apologize for the jumping around, is you're going to take all your standard templates and your sheet formats, and you're going to find a location within the vault that you can place them. All the extensions, in order to accept them into a workflow, you have to have a workflow that does not limit the file extension. Now, I'll show you what, what mine is. Mine actually enters a state called in library. I don't really need to revision manage necessarily these, so I really have them go to a single area within the vault. Now with that area, first of all, I've got a, a category called library that says, hey, if I put any file in the file path with libraries in it, it automatically becomes a library category. Now for those of you who maybe are not as familiar with the admin side of things, it's a way of organizing the type of file. So I now understand that anything in the libraries folder is a library file. Then I can tell the software where library files go. So I have a workflow for libraries. You can see it's, it's very simple. I have a location for my PCBs and I have a location for everything else. I tell the software that if the category is libraries, then I want you to go into this workflow. Now, if you look, you can see that all of my templates have been entered into this workflow. So bring them in, check them in, make sure they're getting accepted into a category, and they're accepted in a workflow. I like to isolate them in their own workflow because I think that um, the process for manipulating or changing templates is a little bit different than your day-to-day -day process of approving drawings and, and solid models for that matter. So now that I have these templates in there, another thing that we want to talk about, I want to go down to the version tab. And the version tab is there to tell me whether I have a copy of this file local on my system. Okay, You can see that it says, yeah, I have a version one of this sheet format, version one of this assembly, drawing and part template. So I have a copy of these local on my machine and that's going to be able to come important here in just a minute. So going back to SOLIDWORKS, what do I have to do here? All I'm going to do is go to my tools options, file locations, under document templates, 
and I'm going to add that exact path, which is my C EPDM Vault Libraries Templates, SolidWorks Templates, whatever your path is, you would add it there. And what this does is it will now show up as a tab in my File New dialog. And there's the three templates that I have. Now, I showed you the other template from Enterprise. Watch the difference when I start a part here. Okay, it doesn't tell me where to save it. It doesn't bring up the data car. This is the, the more traditional use of templates. So now that you've kind of seen that work, let's talk about the local file version. You saw that I have the local version of each file. It's important that your users have a copy of the template local on their machine at all times. So I'm going to actually remove mine. So I'm going to go up a level here. And I'm just going to select the folder and tell the software to clear the local cache, which says remove the local copy of the files within that folder. Now, if I go in there, you'll see that there is no local file. Okay, so the templates do not exist on my hard drive. Now, how does that affect SOLIDWORKS? If I do a file new, okay, and I go to the templates, and there's my SW templates and say OK here, you can see that it, it won't even allow me. Oh, that assembly's there. File new. Oh, let's see what it's doing in the background here. Art template exists. You can see what happens here is that it was able to automatically retrieve the template. Let's try the drawing template. You can see it does not exist. If I go File New and I select my, select my drawing template, it takes a second. But if we look back here, oh, sorry, if we look back in the folder and reselect, it was able to retrieve the drawing template. So it is important that the software does have a version of the template local, okay? And you can see that it's able to retrieve that. Now, what I do want to do, however, is I want to make sure, even though I have a copy local, that it's going to always have the latest version of the files. Now, one way to do that, I'm going to just go back here and we'll clear the local cache once again, just showing you that these are now all removed. Uh, let's just clear local cache on all these. Okay, you can see there is now no local file. For some reason, this drawing doesn't want, oh, because it's open. Um, you can see that uh, there is no local file on several of these. So one of the other aspects that we can use to ensure that the users have the latest version is found in the administration tool under the user settings. And you can do this by groups as well. But under the, the users or groups, you're going to find an option to cache. Caching is the whole idea of getting a, <coughs> excuse me, a copy from the vault and bringing it local. So here's where we can tell the software to go into the libraries, go into my templates, into the SOLIDWORKS templates, and I have a choice to refresh the cache during login. Now what this will do is as you're logging in for the first time or each time, it's going to look and see and refresh those files. So let's see that in action. We'll go ahead and log off as the admin and then we'll log in as the admin, which is the user that I'm using for my presentation today. And if I go back to the very same folder, okay, you can see that the ones that did not exist locally, now do exist. The great thing is each day or each login, if somebody has changed the, the template files, they will automatically be updated in somebody's local cache. Now this local cache option, we're going to talk about this throughout all the standard content today. 
but it's important for you to have those files local uh, and have the latest version of those files local. Okay. Now, here's probably one of the most important pieces to this, uh, and this can mess up the entire process. Once you bring the templates into the vault, you want to remove all other template options. You want to remove templates that are installed with uh, the, you know, the SOLIDWORKS tutorials, the paths for that. You want to make sure all the systems are using the enterprise PDM stored templates only. Otherwise, you still might have users that are grabbing templates that are outside the vault or their own copies. Okay. Now, one thing we can't do here is we can't stop somebody from creating their own. You know, I would just encourage them to use the templates in the vault. If they don't like the templates, you know, talk to them about what maybe doesn't work for them and why they won't use them. Um, but if you put them in the vault, it shouldn't feel any different than what you have today. Now, let's talk about modification of templates because really this comes down to permissions. I've been talking for years about the concept of having a librarian, having somebody who's responsible for performing updates on library files. That person, you may submit your file to that person to put it in the library, or you may submit a change to a template to that person, but that person will have be the only one to have permissions to change any of the library files. Okay, and again, it depends on your organization and how you're laid out. Maybe you do have everybody uh, with their hands in the pot there. But you need somebody to kind of focus on the changes that you're going to have, and that's where a librarian is, uh, is going to come into play. So for everybody that is not the librarian, the only thing you really need here is read access to the files. Read access and show working versions of a file. Now this is probably going to make more sense to anybody online that may be admins of the system here, but let's go to the template section here. And the, the two that you will need, uh, the, the show working versions of files, is at the very bottom. The reason why the working versions is I'm making the assumption that we're not actually creating revisions every time we change or update a template. I don't think you're doing that today when they're being stored in a folder on the server. I think somebody's just going in, editing them, and saving them. So show working versions is going to allow you to see uh, anything that is not assigned a revision. And then read file contents uh, is the only other one necessary for anybody who is not a librarian. Now for a librarian, he's going to have the ability to, to check out the file, maybe even move the file and reorganize how the templates are stored in here. So those are important as well. Now I also mentioned duplicate file settings because really you don't want to have duplicate templates in the vault as well. Now in the admin tool, you'll also find a folder called file types. And what this does is it lists known file types recognized by Windows and Enterprise PDM. When I say Enterprise PDM, as soon as you check something in with an extension, it's recognized by Enterprise PDM. A little bit earlier in the testing, I just created a, a dummy file, a text file that I changed the extension to .kevin. And when I did that, .kevin shows up in this file list because it's now recognized by Enterprise PDM. So in the case of our templates, if we go down to our template section here, let's just say a sheet format. Uh, that's one of the file extensions. If I go down to sheet format and right click on it, go to the properties, here's where I can set whether or not I'm going to allow duplicate file names for my sheet formats or templates. I recommend, since you're not going to want duplicates, that you go ahead and turn on do not allow duplicate file names. And when you do, 
Uh, that's going to allow you to ensure that nobody makes any copies of templates inside the vault. Again, we can't affect what happens outside of the vault. So we've talked about the extensions. We've talked about how to get the latest. The two ways to administer, one is, one is through the enterprise PDM templates and one is through just standard templates in SOLIDWORKS. Talked about duplicate file settings and workflows. Now data card support, it's pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. If you want a data card to exist specifically for your templates, what you would do is take an existing data card, let's say a SOLIDWORKS drawing card, and make it support the extensions that are templates. So I would put this as a, a SLD DRT for my drawing uh, sheet formats and save it to that folder. Okay, so we can support the data card. Now, what kind of information would you store on a, a template data card? I don't know. Maybe you'd, you'd store what the last change was, uh, maybe the last release date. Maybe you've got customer templates with their own sheet formats. Maybe you want to know the last time the customer sent you their sheet formats so you know at what time uh, they did that. So you can kind of work out what kind of information you might need on a data card specifically for templates. But as long as the file extension is added, uh, this will support uh, sheet formats or drawing templates for that matter. Okay, so there's templates and sheet formats. Let's keep moving on. A lot of what we talked about will be duplicated from here on out. So let's talk about Toolbox. Now, I would say 50% of our customers have gone away from using Toolbox as the main source for managing standard hardware. When I say that, I mean what they most use Toolbox for is just to create the faster, and then they save it somewhere else. Obviously, Toolbox is part of SOLIDWORKS Professional, but when it comes to Enterprise PDM, it makes it easy to use Toolbox the way it was originally intended. It was intended to have a library that continually gets updated with all the fasteners and configurations that you use inside your assemblies. Well, as most of you know, if somebody has a, their own toolbox library and they send an assembly to someone else without the fasteners, and that configuration does not exist in their toolbox library, you know, all bets are off. You, you typically get the default size, it's the largest size, and it's just not easily managed between different individuals. So in comes Enterprise PDM, which is made for managing this type of data. In Enterprise PDM, there's a built-in add-in for Toolbox. Now when I say a built-in add-in, the first thing that we need to know about this add-in is we don't need to run the SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM add-in to actually do this. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. Now this add-in for Toolbox does a bunch of things. First of all, it will check in and out parts when it needs to. It will always ensure that the latest version of each part is used. So the conversation we're having about templates, I don't have to worry about it with Toolbox. It will add missing parts in configurations using the database okay, if an assembly is added that is using them. So great for the migration process of moving to Enterprise PDM so that you can get Toolbox all in there. And then the, la the other thing here is it redirects the assembly references to the Vault Toolbox. So think about this. I've been using Toolbox on my local system for six months. All my references and Toolbox files are to my C drive, to some Toolbox folder I have there. When I go into Enterprise PDM and I check in assemblies, I can have it automatically redirect to the Vault Toolbox. So it's going to look into that Vault Toolbox and find out if the references exist in there 
And if not, uh, it's going to build the configurations and references. It's going to redirect it. Now, the only thing to know about this, and this is uh, maybe a misnomer, is that you cannot use the SOLIDWORKS add-in to do this. You can't do this in SOLIDWORKS. When you check in these assemblies, you just do it in Windows Explorer because when you open an assembly in SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS uses the, the search routine to figure out the paths to all the files. So it doesn't redirect to the Vault Toolbox. It has to be done in Explorer. Okay, so let's talk about how this toolbox is to be set up. Well, first of all, in the Admin tool, you're going to find a folder for Toolbox. And this is where you initially trigger and tell the software we are going to manage data in, in the Vault, the Toolbox data. But then we have to tell the software when a user is accessing Toolbox, what are their permissions coming from? So think about this. It can use a super user's permissions to access the files. So I don't have to give everybody access to all the files in Toolbox. I can say, use the admin's permissions. That way, when you add a configuration, or you do anything to the file, it just uses this super user. Okay, so the only way to make any changes is actually through the Toolbox app. Okay, the next thing we do is specify where the root folder path is of the SOLIDWORKS Toolbox files. Now let me just show you that. If I go to my libraries, I've just placed my SOLIDWORKS Toolbox files, including the browser, uh, the database, all the files that you would find in your local toolbox into the vault and everything gets checked in. If I go into the browser, you'll notice that everything in here is in the state called in library because of my library workflow and category, and everything is ready to be served out of this tool. Okay. So there's one other option that's kind of in here automatically is Search subfolders for toolbox parts on assembly check-in. That's that redirection I was talking about. The ability to, when you check in the file, it redirects you to the uh, toolbox data inside the vault if the files were outside the vault. Now, if you wanted to limit who could get access or modify toolbox files, what you could do is use, when accessing toolbox, use permissions from the logged in user. And if you do that, then you'll have to go to each user of Toolbox and assign permissions to the Toolbox folders, these folders here, to those who will need to modify. Um, if they're not going to modify, they're not going to add configurations or anything like that, then they'll need just read-only and working version access. Okay, so once this is set up, um, what do I have to do in SOLIDWORKS? Well, first of all, I have to go to my uh, SOLIDWORKS options and go under Whole Wizard and Toolbox. And I've got to add my Whole Wizard and Toolbox folder path that coincides with that library location within the vault. Okay, you'll notice that there's an option below here, make this folder the default search location for toolbox components, is, is turned off. I can't turn it off here. This is because it's actually controlled here. Okay? Allow client, clients to change the toolbox option. See, I don't have that on, so I cannot change this in SOLIDWORKS. It's forcing them to use this toolbox. Now, when I select configure, which you would typically use to modify the standards in Toolbox, it says, hey, it's being managed by Enterprise PDM and needs to be checked out. Do you want to check out the database? So because I'm a user with permissions, it's went ahead and it's checked out the database, and now I can make changes to my defined settings if I wanted to. Okay. Um, once I've made changes here 
and go ahead and just try to close this. Notice what it, it popped up real quick. But as soon as I go to close the changes, it saves that database in the vault and automatically checks it back in. So it's nothing you have to worry about as a user. Okay, the check in, the check out. Now the same things are going to come into play with Toolbox that we talked about templates. It is absolutely critical to get rid of your local toolbox once you started using the vault. You don't want any of the references to happen locally. Okay? You want it to be all to the vaulted data. Okay, so that's very important. Now, I mentioned that, that redirection, the, the automatically look in this folder for toolbox files. Uh, it cannot be done with the, the enterprise PDM add-in inside of SolidWorks. So if you're looking for that redirect on a file open inside of SolidWorks, it's not going to happen. You've got to check your files in from Windows Explorer to make that happen. Okay, so it doesn't really uh, buy you a whole lot if you're running inside of SOLIDWORKS. But I truly believe Toolbox can be used as it's supposed to be used inside of Enterprise PDM. I know a lot of people were uh, a little bit taken aback by its performance with the way uh, it can be configured without having Enterprise PDM. But I urge you to attempt to use Toolbox within the vault. So, continuing on, our next topic, design library. Your design library is accessed from inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, a lot of the same questions that we had, again, with the last two. Uh, first, we have to look at the file extension support. We've got to make sure our vault will accept, accept all the file extensions. And there's some really weird file extensions as you get into these next couple here. Um, we have our typical SLD, PRT, ASM. So your, your parts and assemblies that you're storing in your design library uh, that you would reuse. But then you have uh, notes, geometric tolerances, surface finish, um, blocks, uh, library features, motion favorites. These are all some of the extensions that you'll see um, inside of the design library. Um, you will have to just add the folder for the design library. Um, this is where a librarian comes into play because what I've typically seen is everyone has their own design library and have stored their own uh, components within that library. So you, you kind of want to bring all that together to bring everyone's knowledge and customization into one design library. I would start with the SOLIDWORKS default, bring it in, and then incorporate all the other content that your users need. Now, here's one question is, do your users always need the latest version of any of the design library files? And I believe that you do always need the latest version. So this is uh, one of those standard contents that you'll want to cache locally uh, on login using that cache refresh. So let's just take a look at how mine works here. Uh, if I go into my design library, I just set up my vaulted design library as a folder in here. I do that by saying add file location. And I browse to my vault where I've copied in under libraries my design library. And you can see uh, folders for annotations, features, parts, routing, all of that's in here as well. So it's important also <clears throat> to make sure that these files um, are on my local system. So you can see I can go to my design library annotations and you can see they all show up. But let's just go into my vault here and go to my design library. And I'm just going to clear the local cache on this. Okay, and if I go in there, you'll see under my version, I have no local file of these 
these files. So what happens in the design library when I don't have a local cache? Well, I can go to that annotation folder and it's empty. It's completely empty. So without a local version of the files, you'll see nothing here. Okay, it'll be a bunch of empty folders. So this is where you either have to do two things. As a user, you see that, you come to, come to your design library and you say, get latest version, which the software will go through all the folders and it will get copy of the latest version of the design library. Or as we were talking earlier, go to the user group. Let me show you this at the group level, just so you, let's say all engineers, uh, we're gonna cache the design library, we're going to refresh this cache during login. Okay, so it's going to go to the vault, it's going to compare whether or not there is a newer version of any file, and it's going to automatically retrieve that. So let's just see this in action here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just clear my local cache once again. Let's just prove that some of those are not local to my machine. Okay. If I now log off, I want you to see kind of what kind of time it takes to refresh the cache as well. So I log back in as the user, and I go to that same folder. Okay. Now it will take a little bit of time to do the cache refresh, but it's going to perform this cache refresh automatically for me if I've saved my setting, which I think, believe I did. So it's important to um, especially with the design library, to get that file local. And the cache refresh is the best way to go ahead and do that. Okay, As a user, if you come into SOLIDWORKS and it doesn't exist, I mean, that's a quick trigger to say, hey, let me just go get the latest version on all of these as well. So I believe the design library, you do want the latest version at all times. When it comes to file support, uh, file extension support, um, these funky templates or extensions here, um, you want to make sure they get accepted into a workflow as well. And then we also can uh, get in here and do duplicate file settings for these as well. If you wanted to uh, not use the duplicate, notice here some of the, uh, let's see, here's your geometric tolerant favorites. So, as soon as a file like that's in the vault, you can see that it understands and I can set my duplicate file settings specifically for that file extension. Okay. Next one I, I have titled uh, SOLIDWORKS Custom Files. Um, I really think that each of these could be looked at individually, but really they all are going to uh, have uh, the same feel to them. When I say custom files, this is any file format that SOLIDWORKS needs when you go to Tools, Options, File Locations. There are tons of different files that it's looking for, whether it's blocks or BOM templates or decals, all these different paths, it's looking for some file format. Now, this is where I think SOLIDWORKS, at least out of the box, is highly deficient in organizing all the things that are reusable. It places them in all sorts of different locations. Now, I've shown this in my Lunch and Learns before, but what I've done, and I've been doing for years, is I've created a folder called my SOLIDWORKS library. And I've created a folder for every standard file that SOLIDWORKS looks for whether it be uh, 3D PDF themes or WeldMit profiles. Everything is stored in one single set of folders. Now, getting this organized takes a little time up front. Um, you do have to find out where the original path is in SOLIDWORKS and copy the file to these folders. So I'm not saying that this is going to be easy to set this up. It does take a little bit of time. But once it is set up, let's, let's go into the vault here. Um, what you're able to do is exactly what we've been doing with the design library templates and toolbox. 
I bring that entire library in here. I check it all in, and now what I have is I have my material databases all inside of the vault. They're all in the library. They all can be managed by the librarian. But more importantly, everybody on your team can now point to those library files. So if I wanted to point to the material libraries in the vault, okay, I go to the material databases, and I add the path to the vault. Okay. Again, this is very, very simple. Uh, what we're talking about here, I go to my library, I find my material databases, and say OK. And now I have a library path from the vault. Now, we mentioned being all in. Uh, being all in the enterprise PDM is it's important to make sure that you remove all these other folders, these material database folders. It's important. You don't want someone using something local if it's shared across the board. If somebody adds something to a material database, you want them to see it. Now, when it comes to permissions for these files, again, you can either use the, the whole librarian method, so giving only one person or a few people the ability to make changes to certain files, or you let everyone make changes to them. Okay. So the other nice thing about doing all the folders is you can give permission by folder. So I can give somebody permission to add textures but not make any changes to title block templates. But I truly believe that every file format that you find that's unique that you customize in SOLIDWORKS should be in the vault and should be shared amongst your users. Okay, and this is a perfect way to do that. Now, the last one we need to talk about, and I know there's a lot of words on this page, is routing. Now, routing, uh, very much like the design library, um, except there's some, some files with an XML file extension uh, within the vault. We do only really need read-only permission to these files. A uh, couple things we need to consider, though, is how routing creates sub-assemblies. Um, when you create a route inside of SOLIDWORKS, you have the choice if it's a virtual file or it's not. Um, if it's a virtual file, there's no data card. So it follows the workflow for all the parent assemblies. And that's all set in the route system options. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, when it comes to the metadata for all the route parts, that's typically done in the design tables, so that's very easy. Um, two things we have to do is we have to set up the paths in the routing library manager. Absolute have to. And then uh, we want to make sure that the settings for the library manager are saved and shared amongst everybody. So let's go into the vault and look at some of the routing library uh, options that we have. Well, first of all, with routing on, um, what you're going to have, let's, uh, I'm just going to start an assembly here. What you're going to have is some options specific to routing. Now, two options that I want to point out are related to whether or not routing creates parts externally to the assembly or assemblies externally to the assembly. Now, I keep mine at always save sub-assemblies externally, uh, and I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Now, since I already showed you how to add the design library to the vault, uh, I already have my routing components ready to go from the vault. Okay, the only thing I have to do is specify to routing that I'm using the components. My default library is within the vault. Okay, so we do that by going to your SOLIDWORKS settings. Under SOLIDWORKS tools, you'll find the uh, routing library manager. 
And in there, we want to go to Routing, File, Locations, and Settings. This is the big one, is we want to make sure our routing library is set to the Enterprise PDM Vault. Okay? If you don't do that, you'll get a lot of flags, and it will say, hey, you're adding components that are not part of the library. Do you really want to do this? So piping and routing works the same way um, inside the vault here. So if I wanted to add a flange, and let's just start something here. You, first of all, you can see that my flange doesn't exist, right? So I don't have a local version of that file right now. Let me just get latest version on that uh, design library here. I guess my cache didn't complete. So let's just get my, my local version so I can see it inside a vault. Okay, now I'll just uh, refresh this here. Okay, so I'm in the design library. Let's drag a flange out here. You can see as soon as I drag the flange and I pick the configuration, it asks me if I want to save this subassembly, which is fine, and it takes me right to the vault. I'll just call this assembly one. Okay, it brings up my data card. Okay, um, it's using the elbow within the vault. It's saying it has to modify it. This is just because my elbow is in an older version of SOLIDWORKS. I don't need to check it out in this case. Okay, and then it brings up my route property settings as we typically would expect them inside of, of SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so once we have this, you'll notice that it creates a sub-assembly inside of SOLIDWORKS for the pipe route as well. I'm just going to accept this route. Okay, and you'll notice when I go into my vault here where I was saving these, uh, here's the files that we were just creating. So here's my assembly. If I see what it contains, you can see that the, uh, check it in here, you can see that the subassembly uh, is part of that as well. So here's the automatically create subassembly option. Um, that's important to make sure that you have that set the way you want it to work. Uh, these files, the uh, pipe here is actually a virtual document. So I don't have control over uh, that file individually. There's no file to manage on my drive. Okay, so how do I save the SQY settings, the settings for the routing tool? Well, right inside the routing library manager, there's going to be the ability to save the settings. Um, you'll see right here at the bottom of the route file locations, you'll see a save settings option. Go ahead and save that. This is what gets shared amongst all your groups. So set it up on one machine, save the SQY file, and then you're going to load the settings for other users. Go to each machine and then everyone will be using the vault. And again, I'll reiterate this. Once you set it up to use the vault, all other libraries go away. Make them disappear off the servers, off the hard drives. If you have to search someone's machine for the names, Make it disappear. Go all in with Enterprise PDM. Okay. Now, in the case of routing, uh, I don't believe, and, and some may dispute this, that caching the files is required. And here's why. Uh, I'm just going to open up uh, an assembly here that uses routing. Let's take my routing sample here. Okay, if for some reason you're, you have a file local that's an older version, I'm just going to do this on the swing check valve uh, just so you can see this. Uh, if you happen to have an older version of the file local, what's going to happen is it's still going to let you insert it from your library, but you're going to see in your route that you have an older version. It's going to show up in a different color. It's going to flag you that it's older. All you have to do is get latest version on it. So you don't have to continually cache your routing library. 
Uh, and that's important because, you know, again, that's just a good bit of data that you're having to cache every time you log in, along with your design library, your templates, and, and so on. Um, and I think it's it's this is the only one of the tools that you're really using parts for that you can see whether you have an older version or a newer version. So you can very easily just refresh that as needed. I also don't believe routing components uh, get revisioned the same way. Um, I don't. I don't feel like if there's a change to a routing component that it's going to affect multiple assemblies, so it's not as critical. Uh, and again, some may dispute that, but uh, I don't. I think uh, not caching them is okay. But if you feel you got to cache it, go for it. Okay. And as far as permissions, uh, you need at least read and show working versions available to you. So those are the ones I wanted to cover today. And, you know, just to kind of refresh um, some of the concepts that I talked about, I, I know there's different ways of approaching this, but uh, A number one is if you decide to commit to managing any of these standard contents inside of SOLIDWORKS, ensure that the, all other copies are gone from every machine, from the server. Do not allow duplicates, because that's the first that's the first out that a user will have is if they can find the copies of the files local, they they may just gravitate towards that. So go all in. And this whole concept of a librarian, you can make that very simple. You know, pick one person in your group, say, okay, you're going to be the librarian for managing this, this, and this. So if I need to add a new file to the routing library, all I'm going to do is send that file in an email to the librarian and say, hey, here's the file that I need added to the Enterprise PDM routing library. Um, that person can put it in, fill out the data card information, get it checked in and ready to go, and now that other user has that file available to them, and the whole organization does. Okay, well, I want to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, if you have any further questions, I know this was a lot of conceptual discussion today, but if you have any other questions, feel free to post them in the question section. Otherwise, uh, you can send me an email at kevin at caddimensions.com, and I uh, look forward to seeing you on another lunch and learn. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.